Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series on Savitri with our beloved Ranga. Today is June 10th, 2023. We are on page 33, still in book one, the book of beginnings, canto three, the yoga of the soul's release. His soul stood free, a witness and a king, absorbed no more in the moment-ridden flux, where mind incessantly drifts as on a raft, hurried from phenomenon to phenomenon. He abode at rest in indivisible time, as if a story long written but acted now, in his present he held his future and his past, felt in the seconds the uncounted years, and saw the hours like dots upon a page. An aspect of the unknown reality altered the meaning of the cosmic scene. This huge Material universe became a small result of a stupendous force. Overtaking the moment, the eternal ray illumined that which never yet was made. Thought lay down in a mighty voicelessness. The toiling thinker widened and grew still. Wisdom transcendent touched his quivering heart. His soul could sail beyond thought's luminous bar. Mind screened no more the shoreless infinite. Okay. <clears throat> we know that Sriradha is describing Ashwapati's experiences. He has gone to the spiritual planes of consciousness. He is experiencing the self and all his experiences he is listing one by one. Okay, so we'll go into each one and each sentence we'll read and see what he's saying. His soul stood free, a witness and a king. So note the two things, the witness we know very well it represents the self, the Brahmic consciousness. So he is there. But he is also king. He is a, a lord of the. So this reminds me of a small incident uh, because feeling like a king uh, may not be limited only to Sri Aurobindo. Okay? So <coughs> you are master, you are the king. So when Raman Maharshi, you know about him, he was. Absolutely no possessions at all. No money, no clothes, nothing. And he used to sit in the temple and go on meditating. Only a loincloth, that's all. And when he felt hungry after two, three days, he used to go out into the town and not even a vessel. He used to beg. And they used to pour gruel into his hands and he would just take like that. In 1920s, in modern times in India, to do that like a beggar begging, and a man who is at that level. So someone asked him later on, that, didn't you feel ashamed a little bit of, to beg like that? And you are naked and you are going in the streets and begging? He said, the question of feeling ashamed doesn't even arise. I was the emperor. A king. So, he is in that consciousness. <laughs> Where is the question of shame? <laughs> so, so, <clears throat> His, his soul stood free, a witness and a king, absorbed no more in the moment-ridden flux. Note the two words, moment-ridden. So, first of all, you are in time, moment-ridden, and flux, very clearly defining level one, where there is multiplicity and constant movement. So, you are in, he is no more absorbed in the body-mind life. That's what it means. He is outside the body-mind life where mind incessantly drifts as on a raft. So, this is the nature of the mind. When you are at level 1 in the time and space, 
your mind is constantly drifting it does become silent so for him it has become silent because he has gone above okay he is a witness but on a raft is very very yes, appropriate yes beautiful the raft is going yeah <laughs> yes. absolutely okay so drifts on a raft hurried from phenomenon to phenomenon note the words phenomenon again suggests movement incessant movement in the physical world okay so he abode at rest in indivisible time okay the mind is in time but he is now in indivisible time level 2 spiritual planes of consciousness there is no movement there at all when you are in the self you are in an immutable condition so indivisible time okay indivisible time if time is indivisible it cannot be broken up into hours and seconds and minutes so therefore it is timeless it's an interesting way of putting it <laughs> yes yes there's a line in savitri also uh, timeless in the timeless in time ever born yeah <laughs> so as if a story a long written but acted now you know, very interesting this uh, we'll come back to it i'll finish the sentence in his present he held his future and his past okay so in his present he held his future and his past he is able to see this way and that way okay now this as if a story written long written but acted now this is a frequent experience of yogis what happens is that when they have a spiritual experience they say oh i knew it all along but i had forgotten about it this is the experience that many people have they knew it because it's already there in you everything is there in you if you remember in the synthesis he says that the eternal shastra the knowledge of the divine is already there in you and he also says the guru also is there already in you but hidden behind curtains so it is already there you are already the divine in essence you have to discover it so as if a story long written but acted now in his present he held his future and his past look at the alliteration here mm. his present he held his future and his past <laughs> okay so felt in the seconds the uncounted years we come back again to the finite is contains the infinite and the infinite contains the finite okay so he felt in the seconds the uncounted years and saw the hours like dots upon a page the same idea putting in different ways hours are long hours are huge but they're just a dot on the page <laughs> So, remind you again of that famous four lines of Blake: so, to see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand, and eternity in an hour. So, same they saying the same thing in different words. So, and saw the hour like dots upon a page, an aspect of the unknown reality. altered the meaning of the cosmic scene now two lines in a complete sentence so an aspect of the unknown reality altered the meaning of the cosmic scene in the cosmic scene when we are seeing we are seeing forms and we take them to be real and we are also seeing separate forms so we are seeing multiplicity and thinking it is real and we are also seeing forms and we are thinking it is real but when you go to the higher consciousness there is something there in the higher consciousness which changes the meaning of this cosmic scene you are not seeing the forms as separate and you also see the forms as the most external part of reality behind that is the real reality the divine presence is there behind the forms so that's what is meaning here altered the meaning of the cosmic scene the way you are seeing is altered completely in two ways the forms are not as real as you thought them to be and also the multiplicity is an illusion these two ways it alters the scene <clears throat> okay so this huge material universe became a small result of a stupendous force 
overtaking the moment the eternal ray illumined that which never yet was made so overtaking the moment going beyond time the moment is time so overtaking the moment you are outside time you have gone beyond time so overtaking the moment the eternal ray okay the divine light illumined that which never yet was made things which we never see here in the physical world he could now see and key in that is all cap yes key. that's right okay that refers to the divinity itself to the divine himself uh his light the eternal ray the light is revealing to him now ah. things which mm-hmm. you never see in the physical world okay so <clears throat> that's what he is never yet made the unmanifest okay so thought lay down in a mighty voicelessness beautiful way of saying the silent mind <laughs> okay thought lay down in a mighty voicelessness the toiling thinker widened and grew still wisdom transcendent touched his quivering heart his soul could sail beyond thought's luminous bar mind screened no more the shoreless infinite again two lines so look at the image the luminous bar and his soul could sail so the bar is here you have to the bar has got a hundred meanings so here it means a bar of sand or mud or stone which is at the mouth of a river or a harbor that's a bar and the it is going out of the shelter of the bar okay and going beyond the soul is sailing beyond thought's luminous bar thought is limiting it's a harbor yes it is safe shelter yes, yes. but you now you are going beyond the bar into a silent mind no more thought <laughs> that's what he say the image is very clear two words bar and could sail <laughs> so these two give you the image of the in a in a in a harbor you are safe limited very limited very clearly limited but now he is going beyond the bar beyond the shelter of the it was harbor. A, a poem that uh, temi asked me to read almost every day um over the across the bar tennyson i believe it's tennyson's poem crossing the bar she wanted me to read that and this is that sense of the bar yes. in in uh, in the next canto we'll have the sailor the longest sustained imagery in savitri who is on the sea yeah and all those images will come so across a void retreating sky he glimpsed through a last glimmer and drift of vanishing stars the superconscient realms of motionless peace where judgment ceases and the word is mute and the uncovered lies pathless and alone there came not form or any mounting voice there only were silence and the absolute out of that stillness mind new born arose and woke to truths once inexpressible and forms appeared dumbly significant a seeing thought a self revealing voice he knew the source from which his spirit came movement was married to the immobile vast he plunged his roots into the infinite he based his life upon eternity fantastic so again he is expressing the different experiences that he had so mind screened no more 
the shoreless infinite. Again, that the uh, the image of the bar and the sailing and shoreless. That is part of the image. Okay, mind screen no more. The shoreless infinite. The shoreless infinite. We don't see it at our level because the mind is screening it. Our mind is limited and not allowing us to see it. But he has gone beyond the bar of the harbor of the mind, so he can now see it. Mind screen no more. The shoreless infinite. In other words, he is seeing the infinite. Okay, across a void, retreating sky, he glimpsed through a last glimmer and drift of vanishing stars. The superconscient realms of motionless peace. Description is perfect for the Brahman consciousness. Motionless peace. Peace is there and motionless, immutable, and peace. Okay. So he's uh, he he's glimpsing them only. Yeah, now. that's right. He's through a last glimmer and grift of vanishing stars. The superconscient realms of a motionless peace, but. Yeah, he glimpsed. That's right. Okay, across a retreating sky. Even the sky is retreating. Even the sky, although the sky is infinite, even that is going away, and he is seeing the infinite beyond the sky. <laughs> okay, through a last glimmer and drift of vanishing stars. Even the stars and the sky are all retreating and vanishing. He is going beyond the universe. Stars are vanishing. The stars are in the sky. <laughs> okay, so the superconscious realms of motionless peace. So <clears throat> motionless again suggests Brahman consciousness and peace also, because you are not affected anymore by the thoughts and the emotions and the actions of the body. You are not affected at all. Peace, total peace, <laughs> and the unconceived lies. Pathless and alone. Okay, so <clears throat> the unconceived is in the previous uh, two three words he has used the word which never yet was made. You remember, which never yet was made. That means it is not available in the level one in the spirit in the spirit in the physical world. It is not seen. That never was made. Whatever is made is visible in this physical world. But what is not we so inconceived, impossible to conceive here. There he is seeing it. Okay, the unconceived lies pathless and alone. Pathless suggests infinity, and alone suggests oneness. <laughs> so there came not form or any mounting voice. Complete silence, so no voice and no form because it is one. If there are forms, how can you see one? You won't see one. So no forms at all. Just a blank oneness. So when he says, "Out of the formless, the form was made." Pardon? Out of the formless huh. comes the form. That's right. And he's above that. Yes, now. exactly. That's it. <laughs> so he is now in the oneness. He is not seeing forms. Yes, he has gone beyond. There came not form or any mounting voice. There only were silence and the absolute. The absolute corresponds to the alone, and the silence corresponds to the mounting voice. There wasn't any mounting voice. So, out of that stillness, mind newborn arose. So, what does he mean here? Out of that stillness. The normal mind of man became now the higher mind, eleven mind, intuitive mind. New mind arose. Yes. <clears throat> okay, that's what he's meaning. And woke to truths, to truths once inexpressible. Again, it is connected with the inconceived and not yet made. Okay, so inexpressible. That if you can express it. You can use language to describe it, but it is impossible to describe. Featureless, inexpressible. You can't express it in thought. And forms appeared, dumbly significant. Okay, the the forms that are there in the physical world here, there you are not seeing forms. 
they are symbols dumbly significant a symbol is dumbly significant always okay you have if you have mother's ring it's a symbol you're not seeing the mother but it is dumbly suggesting to you mother so dumbly significant all it's a beautiful two word image for to describe a symbol a hieroglyph dumbly significant a seeing thought and a self revealing voice okay the self revealing voice voices are usually experienced through the senses through the ears but now you are not using your ears you are not using because you are there you are using the voice is revealing itself without the senses self revealed okay it doesn't need any other instrument to reveal itself in the physical world everything is revealed only through the senses <laughs> so self revealed <clears throat> voice he knew the source from which his spirit came he can glimpse the origin of things okay so, movement was married to an immobile vast in other words movement in the physical world and was married to the immobile vast marrying the soil to the sky so he can see that everything makes sense there need not be any rejection of the physical world even the symbols here the forms there the forms have disappeared but here the forms are significant dumbly significant they are symbols and we should hear them alliteration yeah movement was married, married to immobile, the immobile vast. Vast. that's right alliteration he plunged his roots into the infinite no the roots are here and the infinite is there and he based his life upon eternity not on body mind life anymore we are basing our life all the time on our body mind life which is not the eternal at all it is a temporal so he now he is basing his life on the eternal not on the body mind life he has gone beyond the body mind life okay so it also suggests uh, he plunges his roots into the infinite there is a beautiful image of the in the gita as well as in the uh, rigveda okay the universe is described as a tree upside down urdhva mulo adashaka the roots are above and the branches are below because the branches become the multiplicity so this is the description of the involution if you want when the one becomes the many so that is also there there is a reflection of that he plunges his roots into the infinite the roots are usually not in the infinite they are very much in the finite but here the roots are in the infinite <laughs> so it is reminiscent of that image in the gita as well as in the uh, rigveda <clears throat> I have a question. Yeah. Do you feel that when Sri Aurobindo has left a gap we should just pause a few moments before yes, we, we begin that. again? Yes, we can do that. Yeah, and think about what he has said. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Certainly. Okay. Only a while at first these heavenly estates these large wide poised uplifting's could endure the high and luminous tension breaks too soon the body's stone stillness and the life's hushed trance the breathless might and calm of silent mind or slowly they fail as sets a golden day the restless nether members tire of peace a nostalgia of old little works and joys a need to call back small familiar selves to tread the accustomed and inferior way the need to rest in a natural po pose of fall as a child who learns to walk 
can walk not long. Replace the titan will forever to climb. On the heart's altar, dim the sacred fire. An old pull of subconscious chords renews. It draws the unwilling spirit from the heights, or a dull gravitation drags us down to the blind, driven inertia of our base. So, this whole paragraph, you must keep in mind, you pointed out in the previous one, across a void retreating sky, he glimpsed. So, it says he has glimpsed it. So, in this paragraph here, he is explaining that it was an experience. It was not a realization. And he couldn't hold it so long. Exactly. So, that's exactly his experience there. This is what happens normally in spiritual experience. You have an experience and then the old nature drags you down again. Gravitation works and drags you down. So, it's a beautiful description. We'll see what it is in what he is describing. It comes down naturally. This happens to everybody. Until finally, the experience goes on repeating, repeating, and then you get, you stay permanently in that new consciousness. So here he is describing how the old nature pulls you down again. Mind you, he is talking at a very high level. So even at the high level, you fall to a lower level, which is already very high compared to ours. <laughs> so we mustn't think that it's an ordinary fall. Okay? It's not a fall into the senses, into ignorance. It's not a fall into ignorance. It's a fall into that previous level. He has gone up and he's coming down again to that level. Only a while at first, these heavenlier states, only a while at first, these heavenlier states, these large, wide, large, wide poised liftings could endure. Again, two lines and one full sentence. So, these large poised upliftings can last only for a short time. That's what it's meaning. The high and luminous tension breaks too soon. You can't stay too long there. You have to come down. The body's stone stillness and the life's hushed trance, the breathless might and calm of silent mind. Okay? So, all this is cannot endure. Don't know. That's what he's saying. Okay? So, the body's stone stillness and the life's hushed trance the breathless might and the calm of silent mind. Semi. He has put a semi there. Semi yeah. So, it is also, these also could not endure. Now, what does he mean by the body's stone stillness? Okay. So, it's a very interesting thing. There is a lot of correspondence explaining this. And many people have experienced this also. When your consciousness goes up into a certain level, there is felt a a certain stone stiffness in the body. Okay? Uh, people have written to Hesteramdha and he has explained. When peace comes down, two things can happen. Not knowledge or not light, but peace. When peace comes down, either you feel ice cold. Like a block of ice. Like a block of ice. Yeah. Or you feel like a stone. Mm -hmm. These are the two things that can occur. I have had experience, I have had talks with people who have had both the experiences. So, one man told me it was like a block of ice. Okay? And the other said, no, it is like a stone-like thing. So, that's what I mean. That doesn't, doesn't last. The moment you open your eyes, that stone-like feeling slowly goes away. <laughs> so, they could not last. Same thing. The body is stone stillness and the life's hushed trance. So, Body and life. The life also is in trance. The life is vital. That also is calm. It's a trance. He's using the word trance for life. Okay, so. The breathless might and a calm of silent mind. The breathless might. Breath, breathless again suggests the vital. Because the vital is the one, the breathing is part of the vital. So, there's a tremendous amount of strength that you experience. 
okay, in that stillness. The breathless mind is a vital strength and the calm of silent mind. So all this does not last for too long. That's what is meaning. Okay, so <clears throat> or slowly they fail as sets a golden day. Magnificent. <laughs> he would have said ordinary day, but he said golden day. That experience was golden. But like the sun is setting, slowly. It's very interesting because this slowly failing is what's interesting. Let me tell you, I have a student here who, very young girl, okay, she knew that she is in a, a very special consciousness because it was so different from the other days, okay. But the whole day it lasted, it was a birthday, it was a birthday and it lasted for the whole day. But there was an incident at home and the parents either scolded her or shouted at her or something. And she felt exactly this. She felt it slipping away. As though a robe is there, it is slowly slipping away. So she knew that she was in a special consciousness. And she came back to a normal consciousness. Because of the scolding. Otherwise it might have lasted. But I mentioned this because of the description. It's fantastic. Look at the description. Or oh, slowly they fail. Slowly failing. Okay? As sets a golden day. <laughs> so... The restless nether remembers. The nether members, body, mind, life. Tire of peace. Reminds you of another sentence? Mortality bears ill the eternal touch. Same thing. Okay? The restless nether members, tire of peace. They don't, can hold peace for too long. <laughs> so, a nostalgia of old little works and joys. The word nostalgia is fantastic. You know what nostalgia is? The yearning for something past. <laughs> okay? so, you will see many people saying, Oh, my childhood days are magnificent. That's nostalgia. Okay? So, the old nature that you had, there's some sort of nostalgia pulling you back. That's what causes the fall. So, it's a beautiful description. Nostalgia. Something even in that limited thing pulls you back into the past. Okay. Uh, you may not agree with me again, but I feel he's speaking of humanity also in this passage. Yes. Because he uses the word us, he uses drags us down. Yes. Not dragging Ashwapati down, but dragging us down. Um, we go through in the it. context, yeah, I don't think I would agree with you because in the context, he is in that golden day. He has three, four pages of experiences. So now it could not last and he is coming down. Mm. We are not being dragged down. We are permanently dragged down here. <laughs> yes, that's, so that's why I don't agree with you. Okay. <laughs> we, are, we are not being dragged down. We are being dragged down from ignorance to worse ignorance. <laughs> so he had restless nether members? Yes. He did? Yes. In that state? Yes, because you have been born in the physical world. No, he. Yes, Ashwati also was a man. Na? I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. A nostalgia of old little works and joys, a need to call back small familiar selves, to tread the accustomed and inferior way. There you are, inferior way. Okay. The need to rest in a natural poise of fall. As a child who learns to walk, can walk no long, not long. Okay. Replace the titan will forever to climb. The word, the verb is replace. What is being replaced? Restless nether members, nostalgia, need to call back, the need to rest, replace the titan will forever to climb. So, four, five subjects and one yes. verb. Yes. Okay. So, all this is replacing the urge to go up. The urge, the nostalgia is bringing you down. It is replacing the golden day. Okay. Then, the need to rest. Okay to go back to familiar ways, then the need to rest in a natural poise of fall. Now, I have the word pose 
of fall. Yeah, that is their pose. Not poise. Pose of fall. I have here poise of fall. You have but, poise, huh? Yeah, I had so poise of fall. So they changed it to pose. Yeah, in my, they've changed it to my pose. edition. Yeah, pose also. Mm -hmm. It's all right. I have poise. It's an old edition. Mine is a yeah. old edition. Mm -hmm. and, and I think both are acceptable yeah. in a way. And this very he is comparing it to a child who is just learning to walk, but he can't walk for uh, walk for too long. He falls down. That's exactly what's happening to Ashwagati also. Okay, replace the Titan will forever to climb. The Titan will you want to go up, but the old nature is not allowing you to do that. It's bringing you down. Now, replace the Titan will forever to climb on the heart's altar. Dim the sac sacred fire. Now, this is also a very interesting sentence. On the heart's altar. The heart is uh, being pictured as a, an altar where the fire is burning. Okay, but now that fire, which was there burning her fire, now is being dimmed. In so, Ashwapati. Dim here is a verb. In Ashwapati. Yes. Okay. On the heart's altar, dim the sacred fire. Replace all this is replacing, and all this is also dimming the sacred fire in his heart. <laughs> so dim is a verb here, hmm. just like replace. So all these things, nostalgia, need to rest, need to come down. All this is replacing his golden day, and also dimming the sacred fire in the heart. <laughs> okay, an old pull. This is. Uh, Selected by mother, this passage. Okay, an old pull of subconscious cords renews. It draws the unwilling spirit from the heights, or a dull gravitation drags us down to the blind, driven inertia of our base. This too, the supreme diplomat can use. He makes our fall a means for greater rise. The sentence ends here, so I'll end here only. For into the ignorant nature's gusty field, he has put a uh, comma, and he goes on to the next sentence. So, very clear here: the old nature is dragging you back. The past has a a tremendous force to take you back to the. Hmm. But you keep old say driving you back. Huh? But Dri you say it's driving you back. Yes. You, us. Yes. Back. Yes, but also but Ashwapati. Not, not Ashwapati. No, it's happening to Ashwapati also. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Accepted. This okay. is natural. As I said, he, Ashwapati is not being dragged back to our level. He is being dragged back to the old, higher mm. level only. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so. <sighs> This to the dip now. This is a very interesting sentence. This to the supreme diplomat can use. Look at that. Supreme diplomat. A diplomat is one who uses words very carefully, and sometimes he doesn't mean what he's saying. Okay. So the diplomat is telling you to go down. It's a failure, but even the failure can be used by him. In what way? The urge to go back to where you came from will be strengthened. That's what he meaning. He said that very clearly in the uh, in the synthesis. <laughs> Once you have that experience, you always want to go back there. He the old nature is pulling yes, you back. Yes, yes, yes tell yes, me. There's a line in he makes our fall a means for greater rise. Exactly, exactly. Same thing you say yeah, here in different yeah. words. <laughs>